<laughs> All right, my friends, we are at the quail. I'm not gonna lie, did I get changed in the car? Yes, is my hair a mess? Certainly, but uh, happy to be here. Can't wait to check some things out. They got the new Lamborghini Countach over there. Let's take a peek. Okay, well, what did we think of that? Uh, the Countach is hard to follow up. That's V12 powered spaceship, but um, I don't know, it's gonna cause some ruckus. People are gonna love it or hate it. Let me know what you think. Duesenberg, one of America's best early automotive manufacturers. This one's pristine. Now, Eel Cord, owner of Duesenberg and Auburn and Cord, told his designers, his engineers, that he wanted a mini Duesenberg when they made the Cord. This is a 1936 Cord 810 with the coffin nose. Um, one of my top 10 favorite cars, without a doubt. 1934 Talbot Coupe. And then we have a lovely MGTA. So MG cars started from Morris Garages. Morris Garages started by working on vehicles and then they would eventually make their own vehicles. And then an offshoot started by Cecil Kimber would be MG cars where they kind of made the Morris cars more sporty. And uh, really, they're the reason I'm into cars too, because uh, my dad's first car in high school was an MGTD. He had to work on it himself, and God, years later, I'm a mechanic's daughter, all thanks to an MGTD. God bless. This 37 horch is horch, hork. I never really know if I'm saying it properly. Beautiful. Now, interesting story how Audi and Horch are related. Now, the gentleman that started, his last name is Horch, started the Horch automotive manufacturer, um, ended up getting kicked out by his board. You know, that happened. Early car mavericks were always getting kicked out of their own automotive company. So he gets kicked out and he wants to start his own, start, start another, should I say. And that's where Audi came around and Audi was actually the name suggestion from like a an elementary school kid um, and you can see also the start of this you can see the auto union right there and clearly the uh, the four circles that make Audi so a little history for you the spirit of ecstasy Rolls Royce's famous emblem and probably one of my favorites um, it's beautiful yes but I also like the story behind it the figure the individual the female that modeled for the spirit of ecstasy was Eleanor Thornton she was the mistress of Lord Montague don't worry Montague's wife knew about it she didn't she was okay with it and um, she modeled for that she would actually perish yeah. shipwreck Lord Montague survived only because he had an inflatable like vest as a part of his three-piece suit. Crazy times. Okay, stop the presses. I'm kind of in my own car bubble sometimes with our mechanic shop. Cars just come to me so I don't always pay attention to the news. But I had no idea Delage had a car coming out. Like, let's take a look at it because I cannot freaking wait. Woo. Totally bonkers. Like, if you had asked me this morning what I associate with Delage, I'd say some absolutely beautiful cars, some great race cars out of France that didn't survive 
in the modern age. I had no freaking idea that they were over here making the quickest street legal car in the world with a V12. Like, you learn something new every day, you know? I was like 16, 17, reading Auto Week, and it gets really loud right there. And I remember first reading about the Pagani Zonda and being like, ooh, what is this? And then, very cool to see Huayra, if I'm even saying that properly, in person. Very special. A little ladybug. Shit, now I'm going to have to hold my arm like this until she's comfortable. So I am an eavesdropping queen, especially around cars, and uh, so the 959, right behind me, initially I was like, oh god, those lights are, yeah, ugh, a little, you know what I mean? And I overheard the wife of the owner saying, oh my god, immediately I tried to get him to take the lights off, and uh, he wouldn't, because uh, they're factory, they were wooden in the factory. Ah, BF40. Ah, like seriously. Produced from 1987 to 1992. This was the last Ferrari that uh, Enzo Ferrari actually gave his approval to. Powered by a V12. Super, super freaking cool. And you know, most, of the, most car nuts had a poster of this hanging on their wall. So funny, I was just talking about reading about the Pecani Zonda uh, in Auto Week back when I was like 17 or something. And would you look at that? I can see one in person. <sighs> Such a big deal.
was part of the three P's of luxury along with Peerless, Piercero, and Packer. Broad uh, breadth of experience in each part of building a car. Mm -hmm. 